Sure. Sure. Alright, we're here at the fantastic gig of Dead Cuts and Fat White Family. I'm with Jerome. Jerome, how you doing, mate? Yeah, alright, mate. You're fucking good? boiling, <laughs> like, literally sweating like a fucking. sweating like uh, a rapist in Kentucky. Like, really? Yeah. How many rapists in Kentucky have you met? We don't want to Seven. go into that. We want to ask you about your music, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, how do you think it went tonight, man? There's a lot of good energy out there. Do you know there. what? If there was, I mean, I, re I did enjoy it, uh, but it was very hot. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I should have dressed light. But no, I enjoyed it. It was good fun. You know, it was good because uh, I think everyone enjoyed it. It's nice. Some girl give me um, an, a, a Crowley book. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So I got presents as well. Cool. Quite nice. You know what, I have to ask, last time we did an interview we didn't actually talk about the occult too yeah. much because uh, people just came and invaded us, so tell us about your affiliation with Crowley, what does it mean to you? <laughs> I couldn't possibly tell you, it would not be enough time to tell you what oh, I think wait, it's about. We've got time, but, but, you can give me well, two or three you know, minutes. It's just, just something that me. I have found very useful um, for getting what I need, so if I... It's like a little uh, dial-up, you know, I dial up the gods and I go, hey, I've got to have something done and they get it done for me. <laughs> and, and it's pretty good when, when you're doing it in uh, the music thing because, you know, you've you got to have so much luck and uh, they can provide you with that on their little dialogue <laughs> if you got said, the right symbols there's, there's a lot of stigma regarding the occult and uh, energies of a certain kind do you feel that it's your job in any way to dispel that stigma or do you think you know what they can no, just know you know what like I think because it's such a personal thing you know uh, I think at the end of the day you know people People are pretty lenient now, you know, about that sort of thing. They they don't they don't tend to bother us. A few people it did actually freak a few people out. Like when we filmed um some of the witches in, in uh, Trev's house, yeah. his wife got a bit freaked out because a friend of hers picked up on the energy coming off some of the stuff, so they put it up on the uh, roof, and uh, <laughs> there, 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 there was a book and there was this. Uh, this uh, dagger thing that I had belonged to one of the OTO, which is Crowley's Temple Lodge lot. And I didn't even tell them that it did, but apparently they were sat there watching TV and they were like, okay, there's whatever's in that bag, it's giving a bad vibe. So they put it on. I turned up, like, where is it? And they're like, it's on the roof. <laughs> so, well, hey, man, yeah. these things happen. You have to suffer for your beliefs for them to be uh, something that means something to you, and I think. Do <laughs> and do we know how to suffer? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. We'll talk more about your suffering in another part. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>